Trust you. <laughs> trust you. I trust you. What do you need? No! <laughs> What's wrong with you? I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> oh! Jeez. Oh, That's dang. Sick. Hey. Dude, trust me, okay? That was a little slightly. I trust you. I trust you. Trust you. You are the first person to catch me. Thanks. Hey, purple shorts. I trust you. What the heck? Shouldn't have trusted you. Hey, dude. Trust me. Hey, hey dude, decide. <laughs> or, or neither is neither is fine. Decide. What? <laughs> what? Decide. <laughs> it's got a lot of hits. It's gonna have a few more, I'm sure. We've been going through life apps and remembering that it uh, doesn't mean anything just to hear something. It's, it's what we do with it. It's the application of it. And uh, today is kind of, a, I'd call it a slippery app. This, this one um, I've kind of struggled with uh, getting it together. Um, forgiving others was hard to hear. We did that one and then we did Confession, that's real simple. You know, if you're stuck in something that you just can't get victory over, you really need to tell someone else, and and uh, that was okay. And, and last week, I mean, who didn't enjoy the rest app? Everybody had naps on Sunday afternoon, didn't you? You know, we've just been doing that all week, just really into that application of resting. But trust is different. And I I say it's slippery. You know, we we make one statement about trusting people, and then... We follow that with a whole bunch of exceptions. Well, I, I'm a very trusting person, but, and then we've got all this stuff, you know, all these exemptions and exceptions, and it's kind of slippery, uh, the kind of message that really gets misunderstood a lot, you know? And so uh, sometimes it might even be used as a weapon against you. Uh, somebody else will hear this and go, ah, but he said trust, and you're not trusting me. So, you know, I just want to put that disclaimer out there. And we all know that trust is just so vital in our relationships, uh, whether it's at home or at work or with our friends. That I mean, trust is a foundation of, of our relationships with each other. We can talk about loving someone and liking someone, and, you know, that's actually a lot easier than trusting. To love someone, I, you know, and to like someone, it's a lot easier than to trust them because, you know, trust is hard. and. And when it's not there, the relationship just, just falls apart. And as we go through this today, I know that we are each thinking as, as you know, now you've realized what the subject was, and you've already thinking of somebody that you're going, I'm not going to trust him. I'm not going to trust her. There's no way. I, I wish I could trust more, but, uh, you know, I'll just get through this. And, you know, when, when she does something to become more trustworthy, then we'll have trust. And so... I'm just going to kind of wait and see what she does, and, and then, you know, if that happens, then maybe, maybe she will earn my trust again. And I'm, what, what I want you to do is to kind of turn that loop off for a few minutes. I, I, want, I want us to get a different perspective of this, because I think we've all got one person, at least one in life, maybe a lot more than one, that's betrayed our trust at some time. And, you know, something happened, the relationship falls apart, and, and they're, they're picture comes into our mind immediately and I'm just asking you just kind of don't don't filter everything through that okay kind of turn that that loop off for a little bit and um, my goal here is not to talk you into trusting that person okay so that's that's not what I'm I'm trying to do my, my goal is to is to look at this really from from God's mind and maybe 
um, and I'll use this phrase uh, through the through the message, is to kind of create a seed bed where, where trust can develop. So uh, you're you're not going to come out of here. You know, I don't have that kind of power to talk you into trusting somebody that you don't trust right now. But maybe we can create a seed bed. Now, two things I think that make it hard to trust. Uh, as we get into this, I, I would imagine that this means different things to all of us. Some of us um, kind of might be like that trust guy. We just go through life, you know, catch me, trust me, just fall in front of people. And I can't imagine why people don't catch me. And we get hurt a lot. You know, we're just trusting people. And, and we think that everybody else should be the same way with us. And so we get bruised a lot because sometimes we're really just too trusting to people that we don't know very well right? And we should pull things in a bit maybe and protect ourselves because we're getting hurt a lot. And others, well, they don't trust anybody ever, you know. Um, they have uh, security systems that are set up in their lives and they never trust anybody because maybe, you know, they just can't stand the pain. But I think of two reasons that, that makes uh, trust difficult. And first one is our experience. Things that have happened to us in the past, our ability to trust, no doubt, is is determined by how much we've been wounded and hurt and, and betrayed in the past. And, and we're each carrying a lot of junk with us, don't we? The older we get, we realize how much stuff we're getting. That's why us older people kind of get bent over like that, because we're carrying all this junk, you know. And, and young people say, ah, oh, just move on, just leave it all behind you. And you say, oh, yeah, I left it all behind me. And then you realize, oh, wait, I've been carrying this for years. But uh, we, we try to move on and leave them behind, but the reality is, is that um, we've been in some relationships where we said, catch me, and nobody caught me. And, I mean, that's just life experience. And we hear people complain, you know, about a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend that just won't commit. And uh, I think a lot of the times it's not really about commitment. It's about trust. It's about somebody that's been hurt a lot, and uh, they're just not able to really trust anyone. And that's sad and, you know, the, the reality is, is that nobody gets off this planet with, uh, without being hurt. Everybody gets some stuff, you know, and, and we're so, so limited because we love people who uh, are incredibly limited by the fact that they're human beings. That's the problem, is that they don't always do the right thing any more than what we do the right thing. And so, you know, we're going to have some experiences and that's just part of being human. The second thing is who we are. Um, I think some of us are just turned to trusting, and some people aren't. And the example that I think about this is, uh, you know, with grandchildren, I love to throw grandchildren in the air. Do you like to throw people in the air? I, I really love, you know, when they get to be like Luke. He's not done this yet, but, you know, need to warn Molly that before too long, Luke's going to get thrown up in the air. And my suspicion is with Luke is he's probably going to grab on a little bit, you know. But I've had grandkids that just grabbed a hold of my wrists and they weren't flying, you know. And, and uh, it's, it's like mom sitting over there looking at it going, oh my, they got to go through this ritual with him. But I love to throw kids up in the air because some of them, you know, some of the kids just go like this and just, just let me fly. You know, we've had some grandkids that did that. Just, yeah, higher, higher. And, you know, they're bumping up on the ceiling and, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's like you go, wow, I wish I could have that kind of trust just to let some big old guy just grab me around the waist and chuck me up in the air and trusting that he's going to catch me. But it's funny how some kids are just kind of turned that way from the very beginning. They're just more, they just don't have any fear. They're just more trusting. And it's kind of like this guy in the video. He's going to catch me, you know. He just, they just believe that everybody, everything's going to work out. And then other kids, they're just from the, you know, it's nothing we do. But just from the very beginning, they're like grabbing on. And that's just, you know, that's just kind of the playing field of, of who we are. And some of us really struggle with this. Um, just isn't natural to us. And it isn't um, because someone has hurt us so much. It's just kind of the way we're turned. We just kind of came out that way. And some of you might be going, well, that's me. You know, I really am not a very trusting person. And I feel bad about it sometimes. And I really don't want to trust anyone. We're going to look at one of the most famous passages in the Bible, it's uh, 1 Corinthians 13. As some of you 
uh, probably most of you at your wedding service, if you are married, had 1 Corinthians 13 read because uh, 1 Corinthians 13 is known as the what chapter? The love chapter, that's right. It's all about love. And it looks so nice in calligraphy on kind of sepia tone paper. It just really just shines that way. But all of us know this, and we go through these words so quickly. And, but Paul in this chapter uh, describes uh, for us what love is, and he gives us some actions that happen or don't happen when love is present. And then at the, at the very end, he really hits it home, and he gives us four things, and that's really where we're going. But he gives us these four things, and he goes through all this stuff, and it's like he says this and this and this, and then he goes, eh, you know, it's kind of like this, it's kind of like this, and he goes, oh, no, here it is. I'm going to boil it down for you. And he gives us these four important words about love, and what he says really is about trust. So 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to be reading 4 through 6 to begin with. And he says, love is patient. And go, yeah, heard that love is kind, I know. It's jealous. It doesn't brag. It isn't arrogant. We're doing okay so far. It isn't rude. It, it doesn't seek its, its own advantage. It, it isn't irritable. Well, sometimes that doesn't fit. But it, and we know that love isn't irritable. It doesn't keep a record of complaints. Hmm. I love that, you know, doesn't, doesn't write down the wrongs because um, some of us or most of us have like files, you know. Some of us are better at this than others, but, but we have everything documented. We have affidavits. We, we have pictures, you know, everything that's been done as, as far as the complaints. And, um, you, know, you know, Paul here, um, inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he says, you know, love isn't trying to catch you doing something wrong. And that's what love is. And then Paul goes on, oh, let me finish that, uh, verse 6. It isn't happy with injustice, but it's happy with the truth. Now, you know, as we cover this, I'm not really going to do, uh, you know, expository preaching on 1 Corinthians 13 because it's obvious from this that Paul is not talking about the kind of love that we fall into, right? This isn't a fall into, fall out of kind of love that we, we talk about so much in our culture, but this is agapeo, this is, this is God's love that's a sacrificial love. And we have times when we walk in this and there are other times when it's just really strange to us. But it, it's so much more than what we know in this human, hum, human relations sometimes. But, but this is what God's offering to us here. Then he goes on with four short phrases that really has a lot to do about our subject of trust. Verse 7, he says, Love puts up with all things, trusts in all things, hopes for all things, endures all things. All. Some translations say always. You know, all. Not, not, not some things. All things. Now, this tells us we, we kind of need to, as I would say, lean into to trust that, that love bends. That, that love isn't just hard and demanding, but, but love is pliable here. Love is always looking for a way to give the other person a break. Love is always looking for uh, to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. L love uh, believes the best. That, that's the seedbed where, where trust can grow, where we give up our right to get even. We, we give up our right to keeping the record. We give up our expectations that thing or things are going to get worse or at least not get any better. And we bend in this. That's what he's saying, that, that love is, is pliable here in the relationship. We expect there to be something good that's going to happen. Love has faith for the future. And the first one, he says, put up. I mean, love puts up with all things. I like that translation. Literally what that means here is it is puts up with an annoyance. Wow. And, and don't go to your marriages. Just, just think about all your relations. But, but puts up with an annoyance here. If we love someone like this, we put up with an annoyance. Does he know my brother? 
You know, does he know my sister or, or, you know, that friend of mine? He says, yes, God in you is going to put up with an annoyance in all things, not just occasionally, but, but in all things. And then, then his second one here, he says, God in you trusts all things. Um, the word, same word that's translated trust is often translated as believe. Here they come, most, uh, most of them translated as trust. But, but believe means to believe to the point of having confidence. Trust, excuse me, trust means to believe to the point of having confidence. And, and trust is, is, is built on belief. Trust is built on what's going to happen in the future. And, and God in me believes that this person will grow and this person will develop the qualities of a person who can have my confidence. And, you know, when we look at it this way, it's not, a, it's not an on-off kind of thing. Uh, we, we, we think of trust as being either yes or no. Either I trust her or I don't trust her. I trust him or I don't trust him. Off and on, she can be trusted because she's been faithful in the past, but she can't be trusted because she hasn't been trusted or hasn't been faithful. It's kind of on or off. And Paul says here, believe, you know. It means your faith is going to have to arise. Now, now if we are that guy who keeps just falling on the ground and we have somebody in particular that we're probably thinking about and we're saying, no way, I'm not falling on the ground in front of her again. I'm not, I'm not going to do that again. I, you know, she's, she's let me fall way too many times. I'm too bruised. And, and we're just focused on that one person. And, and that's not where the focus needs to be. We, we see, we can't do anything about that person trusting us. We, we, we can't teach them how to trust us. We can't uh, demand that they trust us. We can't do a thing about that at all. All we can do is to just let God in and believe that, that God is going to create a, a seedbed, a, a place. God can grow their character so that we can believe in them, okay, and believe that they're going to develop the traits that are necessary. Remember John Lennon used to sing, uh, all we're saying is give peace a a chance. I, I think I think God here is saying, just give trust a chance. Just just make it possible for trust to be there. And then he says, love hopes all things. Of course, again here that has to do with the future, doesn't it? Uh, not the past. That that's not you know that's allowing God to to take us into the future and to see in His eyes what can happen instead of deciding that for Him. And I believe that I'm able and willing, and I can see how the future can be better. And then the last of the four things he says is that love endures all things. And that means just to put up with it, right? Love, love can, can last it out. And Paul, I think, knows about relationships. Paul knows our relationships. They're no different. He says, you know, hang in there, put up with it. Do we have complete confidence? No, we don't. But, but we're leaving room for that to grow, see? This is in developmental stages. Trust is, I mean, what a word that is. You think of all the people that you say, I love you too. I mean, some of us say that to each other on emotional days. You know, we say, I, I love you, man. Yeah, I love you back, you know. Uh, but, but don't we have a lot of people that we say, I love you, and, and the person, yeah, I love you too. How many people do you trust? If you're like me, it's probably less than love, isn't it? Did you ever think about that? That we would love someone, but trusting someone is more difficult for us to do? Uh, I mean, it's, this is just a huge concept. We, uh, we are sincere, um, but how many people do we say, I trust you? I believe in you to the point that I have confidence in you. That's deeper. It's deeper than what love is. Now, the, the reality uh, is that most of us have some expectations of what a person's going to do, and when that happens in our relationships, be it family, friends, work, associates, whatever, I mean, we kind of get stuck in the gap because there's a gap between what our experience is and what our expectations are. I think most of us have more uh, expectations. Our expectations are higher than what the experience is, and we have gaps, and and that gap is out of our control. We can't do anything about that. Person doesn't meet up to our expectations. That, that's out of our power. 
But, but here, here's, the, here's the good news. We get to decide what goes in this gap, what makes up the difference here. Between our expectations and our experience, we decide what's going to go in that gap, and the Holy Spirit in us makes that decision. And remember, this is God app. This isn't, this isn't a Don app. This is a God app. And he gives us the power to put a bridge between what we're experiencing and what our expectations are. And we can, in the middle there, in that gap, we can put assume the worst. We can be suspicious. We can just assume that they are going to, um, you know, betray us again. Uh, this is how you shut a relationship down. Just, just assume that you're always going to fall. If you, if you want all your relationships to go south, just assume the worst in them. Just be overprotective. Put your security system on high alert and just assume that, that they are going to betray you again. And if we put that in the middle there, then we can be assured that it will go south, that it's not going to get any better. And we create this storyline in this narrative in our minds, and all they have to do is just kind of live into it. Now think about that. How do you feel when someone you know doesn't trust you? When uh, you think that you've earned that trust, but they don't, they don't trust you. Does, does that make you want to go deeper in that relationship? Or does it make you pull back? Uh, we pull back, don't we? When you know that they don't trust you, it doesn't draw you in, it, it pushes you away. If, if uh, when children know that their parents don't trust them, that kind of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If, if uh, the child's always told that, you know, you're, you're a bad kid, you're, you're terrible, uh, I can't trust you, that child's probably never going to be trustworthy. And it just kind of becomes this cycle. Uh, when spouses know that there's no trust in their marriage, then there's no motivation to, you know, to let that grow. Nothing good happens when we choose to be suspicious, but when we choose to trust people, then we at least open the door so something good can happen there. Or we can, what we can put in this gap is that we can assume the best. And your, your best shot is to believe the best. When we believe the best about others, then, then it creates this, this environment, this, this seedbed again where, where trust can grow. And this... I mean, this is just really the, the golden rule in action. You know, treat others the way that you want to be treated. And you're saying, well, isn't that sweet? Isn't that nice, Don? I could tell you something about some people that would just, this, just blow this whole thing open. You want me to be trusting. You want me to create an environment. You don't know what she did. You don't know what he said. And, and how many times, and, and you know, just hang in there. I, my, my point here is that we get to decide which way we turn, okay? It's not all in their hands. If we turn into ourselves for a lifetime, I know this is serious. If we turn into ourselves for a lifetime, we will never trust anyone else and we'll never have anyone else that trusts us. Those two things go together. If we just turn into ourselves and say, no, uh, I'm not going to give them that chance, then we will be the people that never trust anyone and no one trusts us because we never get close enough in that relationship to develop that bond. And we get to decide. In healthy relationships, both parties go to rather extreme measures sometimes to leave room for trust. Can we trust God enough to help us narrow this gap and believe the best? I mean, God believes the best, right? This, this is a faith situation. God believes the best about us. So, so we need to apply this trust application. We need, you know, find it up here in your smartphone and turn that sucker on. Every time that you are faced with this question is, I don't know whether, you know, I don't know whether she's changed any or not. And I, I, I'm waiting for her to do something, for him to do something, to show me that he's trustworthy. Turn that trust app on. I mean, when our kids later on... Uh, when your kids are out and you tell them to be home at 10 o'clock and it's 10.30, turn the, 
don't assume, don't assume the worst. You know, don't assume that they're, they're disobeying you. Uh, when the visa bill comes and there's stuff on the visa bill, and just, just don't assume that, you, that your spouse went out and, and did that thing again, you know. Give, give them some, some grace. Cut them some slack. Leave some room for trust. Put Believe the best in the gap. But uh, let's also be honest about it. When we need, what we need to do in trusting others is sometimes it's not the healthiest option. There, the reality is that some relationships um, become so toxic and some people prove themselves that they don't want to be trusted over and over and over so long and we really shouldn't trust them. You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? But it takes really two people. We, we create the seedbed. We create the place for that. But it actually takes two people for there to be a trust relationship. And these situations, what we should do, well, Jesus makes it very clear. He says, if you can't trust them, confront them. You thought, no, I, can't can I just run away from them? No, you got to confront them. You got to talk to them. Now, if you're like me, and 97 percent of Americans, we don't like confrontation. I mean, it's, it, just think about that. How weird you are if you like confrontation. You say, well, I think I get to tell him exactly what he did wrong, and get in his face, and I've got it all laid out, and I got my lawyers here, and and we're just going to lay it out as exactly what he did wrong. I mean, that's that's not a very normal person that likes confrontation like that. Uh, most of us don't like confrontation. You know what we like to do is we like to talk about it, right? We'll talk to everybody else about her or him and never talk to him about it. Well, he's supposed to be psychic. He's supposed to know. He did it, right? So he's supposed to know what he did wrong. No reason to tell him. We'll lose sleep over it. We'll worry about it. Uh, we'll, you know, give them all the messages that they need. We'll pout. We'll ask vague questions that give them the opportunity to spill their guts and confess. Well, all along, we're assuming, of course, that they've done the worst. We'll practice our speech. You know, I think that's what's going on. I've noticed recently, maybe it's just me, maybe it's just where I drive. There's a lot of people driving down the road talking in the car by themselves. I don't, I don't see any Bluetooth, and they're just talking. And I think they're rehearsing their speech, right, of when they're going to confront this person. Now, they probably never give the speech. But we do anything but talk to the person who's let us fall on the ground, right? Matthew 18, Jesus tells us that if someone sins against us, in other words, if, they, if, uh, if our experiences don't match our expectations, <laughs> we're to go to them and we're to point it out. Matthew 18, 15, he says, if your brother or sister sins against you, go and correct them when you are alone together. Okay, it didn't say text them. You know, Jesus could have said text him, right? He didn't, he didn't say text him. He didn't say send him an email. He, he didn't say talk to everybody else about it. He said go to them where you are alone together. If they listen to you, then you've won over your brother or sister. But if they won't listen, take with you one or two brothers, one or two others, excuse me, so that every word may be established by the mouth of two or three witnesses. But if they still won't pay attention, Report it to the church. If they won't pay attention even to the church, treat them as you would a Gentile and a tax collector. Well, that doesn't mean much to us, but just, just trust in there. That, that wasn't a good thing, you know. It means you're not going to have anything to do with them. We confront them, not to accuse them, not to put them down, but to give them, uh, to, to make the effort to forgive and restore the relationship. We confront people about the situation in love with the goal of restoring trust here. Now, if they refuse to listen, it says, if they refuse to listen, understand their problems, then Jesus says, we're to take someone else with us. Say, it's not just me, but, but listen to both of us. And then if that still can't be less, and then Jesus says that we're to separate ourselves from that person. I think what he's saying here, um, among some other things about church discipline that we very seldom practice, but is 
if trust can't be established, we're to walk away. So, so choosing love doesn't mean that we allow ourselves to be taken advantage of for a lifetime over and over and over again. And trust doesn't mean that we allow ourselves to be beaten down. If we can't choose trust, then we need to choose to confront. Now, I think the problem is, is that when many times when we struggle to trust someone, we don't confront the person directly. We remain silent. We hold on to the grudge. We, we walk away. We tell anyone, anybody else that'll listen. But gossip, and that's what that is. Never strengthens a relationship. Holding a grudge doesn't do anything. It just destroys us. So neither of those choices are very good. If we struggle to trust, we need to confront the person in love and, and seek to reconcile if possible. And if not possible, then we've got to walk away. Somewhere we got the idea that walking uh, away from relationships that are unhealthy is never the right thing to do. It can be. You know, Jesus severed some relationships with some people. Don't talk about this much. The Pharisees, he turned his back on them. They just could not be reconciled. And he turned his back. He cried about it. <laughs> he wept about it. But he, he turned away from them. So if, so if we have confronted that person and provided all kinds of opportunities for healing and hope in the relationship and it just hasn't worked, then it's the right thing to do to walk away, not in anger, walk away in peace because trust is not just something that happens trust is a product of faith of of believing that that God is going to do something that God is going to help this relationship and then God is going to help us be this agent and create a seedbed a place for trust to grow well um, that's about all I got except for this um, if you're, if you're struggling with this and you're going, yeah, so what, you know, if, if you have trouble trusting, if, if you're the person who really just kind of turned this way maybe and you have trouble trust to trusting other people in a relationship, I, I want to give you something that might make a difference here. I, I, you know, I was digging deep on this um, the other day. Do you know that God trusts you? We, we all talk about trusting God. Have you ever thought that God trust you? I mean, in your relationship with him, you, you know that God has confidence in you? <clears throat> have we ever flipped it around that way? We have confidence in God, and we, 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 have, we trust in God. We have faith in God. Do you know that God trusts you? God believes in you. God trusts you. You know that? Do you, do you live that? I, I just think this is a huge ingredient for those of us that just say, I, I can't do this. You know, I'm, I'm closing down. Um, it's true. God trusts you so much that he decided that he would put up with anything from you. <laughs> he, he would trust in, you know, all things. He would hope for all things in you. He would endure all things in you. Just, just stop and think about your relationship from that side. And we think... You know, what would our relationship be like with God if God said, oh, you're one and done. You know, you did that one time. You don't get a second chance with me. He says, you're going to have to prove to me. What if God said to you, you're going to have to prove to me that you're trustworthy before I'm going to, to love you. You're going to have to earn my trust for you before I have confidence in you, before I'm going to give you any kind of responsibility with any people. You're going to have to earn this. See, it sounds stupid, doesn't it? But God with us, that's the way he is. He says, no, I trust you. I have confidence in you. And we say, well, I'm not trustworthy. <laughs> there have been so many times when I've failed and fallen, and I'm just not worthy of trust. And technically, we're not. Still, God has faith for us. God has faith in us. We never think of God as, as a faith giver, but he is. God has faith like he asks us to have faith. And he sees things in us that we can't see in ourselves. And that's, that's trust. Philippians 1.6. I love this passage. Paul puts it. I think this is the stream that he's, he's working in right here. He says, I'm not sure. He says, I'm sure about this. 
Uh, other translations say, I'm confident about this. The one who started a good work in you will stay with you to complete the job by the day of Christ Jesus. Now, he's talking to an entire church. He's also talking to individuals. He said, I'm sure about this. What God started in you, God is going to finish. You see, he, God just didn't zap us and make us all perfect. But God has confidence in us. God has confidence in us that we will grow and we will develop and we will become the kind of people, okay, that warrant trust in other people. So, so live into that, that trust of God in your life. You know, that, that's a great compliment that God gives us when he says, you know, I, I love you, I trust you the way you are, I have confidence in you even now because, you see, I'm not, I'm not done with you. When you see Christ, when he comes, you will be complete. You will be perfect. You will be holy like he's holy. And we say, but I'm not worthy of this. And he says, oh, but I see the future for you. See, I see what you're becoming. Let, let me at that. Let me do that. Okay. Sometimes that, that, that might help open us up. Now let's, let's spend a few moments in prayer. As deep cries out 